Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the final word. Aston Villa 3, Everton 0. Everton, first defeat of the season and... Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how it felt. Yeah. Because uh, it was, again, you know, very much like Monday night against Burnley. It was 10 minutes of just... Madness. And it was on us this time, but sadly. Um, Everton obviously decimated with injuries at the moment as well. Didn't make it didn't make it too easy for us from the start, but um disappointing. And it was a game where I, I I I thought we played all right. I thought we were we were perfectly fine in the game and then like that things change very, very quickly. Not well today. I'm not well, no. No, no. Suffering. Tell suffering. Um, yeah, it was. I agree with you. It was. Uh, there was nothing between the two teams. Absolutely nothing. Um, we were obviously the injuries hammered us beforehand. The bench was not as strong as it could have been, and yeah. their bench was very strong. And, and that was ultimately that's what won the game in the end. But for large portions of the game, Everton were, were more than holding their own, and. and at times, I thought they looked the better side, and certainly they had their, you know, their best team. And yeah, certainly, best squad. certainly up to, um, certainly around the time of the first goal as well. I thought we were, we were the best team. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned there, the injuries before the game, no Richarlison, obviously no Dominic Carvalho in any way, um, no, no Seamus Coleman, no Jordan Pickford, and you know you've got positions there which. Certainly, you know, from the goalkeeping position, clearly our number one, the right back. I mean, it's not even that we haven't got another. We've got another right back, but he's, he's, you know, you put, you don't even put him in there because you don't trust him. So that just shows you how how sure we are of right back. And obviously, yes, Rondon's available, but you could, you know, we could, we could, could tell with his um, fitness levels really that you were only going to get. You know, and now really we only got a half hour. Yeah, I think once he sat down, that was the end of it. You know, it was like when if anyone's ever done any kind of exercise, the minute they stop and try and start it's again, it's it's, it's, it's gone. So the second half, he just he was non-existent. Um, but we started all right. You know, we started okay in the game. Got down the right, got a ball into the box. Rondon had an early chance, and again, just that, not having that sharpness. The first time, shouldn't you? Yeah, just not having that sharpness to take your first time. Obviously, Begovic has had to make a really good save off um, off a set piece off Mings, but it really was the set pieces that troubled us. Mm. Um, maybe we should get a set piece coach, like they did um, or they have. Um, but I thought it was nip, nip and tuck. I thought it, you know chances were far you know, far and few between. Mm. There was very little in the game, and I just I thought we were perfectly fine without without. You know, they had a lot of the ball at times, but again, didn't do anything with us. We were trying to hit them on the counter attack. But it was it. We were we were perfectly fine for most of the game. And um it's very hard to criticise a team when you are taken away. You know, it, it's best options in certain positions where it really matters. And I, I you know, as I said, it, the the the, the scoreline in the end I think really flattered them massively. Yeah, I mean, the first half, I, like you said, I thought we were, we carried a real threat. Amari Gray, I thought was excellent in the mm -hmm. first half. Um, one, he put across the goal, he probably should have shot, but it, if Rondon's fit, I think he gets on the end of it. Um, and we, we did have that break, the threat, you know, we had Luca Dean got down the line once, stood one up for Rondon, you know, they cleared. So we had them press back a Wobie. I didn't think I had a particularly good game, but a couple of times stretched them, and it was just a final ball. And yeah, they they had you know they had a lot of the ball as well in the first half. But like you say, you know, they do anything. Thought Mina was excellent. You know, didn't give Watkins any change or Ings. Ings actually went and played in midfield. Yeah, dropped in, didn't he? And um, so I thought we were okay. You know, and, and they had a good side. They had the crowd behind them, but we were, you know, we were fine. And you were looking at it thinking. Rondon is quite clear he's not going to last. You know, when is the manager going to change at a half time or whatever? But certainly in the first half, we, we more than held that up. Do you think that. Um, see, I, I just started with Gomez because I, I thought that 
certainly with, with I think what changed what changed on on Monday night when when Gomez came on was it gave us someone to hold on to the ball in midfield, whereas we normally rely on maybe Don to hold the ball up, and I thought Gomez holding on to the ball a little bit more helped us give us a let a, a platform to grow from, and I just thought that that's maybe what we missed in the in the game was, and I think by the time he come on it was too late, even though it was before the goals it was because we didn't have a centre forward on the pitch when he came on because mm. obviously he came on for Rondon, but I just felt like a Wobi was. He was trying to create things, but nothing was sticking because it was too... It was like that thing with Awobi where it's almost... He's too quick to move the ball uh, instead of just keeping hold of it. And I, I, For me, I felt like Gomez are there the right to just play in that midfield. Because like you just said there, not only not only, well, not only were we outnumbered, but Ings was dropping in. Mm. So we were outnumbered another one. They were playing Ollie Watkins up front trying to stretch us. And then he was dropping deep, adding another player to, to play between the lines. And I just thought Gomez could have... Added another play in it, just to hold on to the ball, so that then allow us to counter attack from there rather than trying to maybe counter attack from our own twelve, you know, you know, our own box. Um, I, I, I just, I just thought maybe it's that. It's hard to say that though, wasn't it? Because I, I thought the plan was fine. We, we had that threat. And we broke two or three times on them, and with a better selection, we might have gone in front. I know what you mean because when he brought Gomez on for Rondon, it was the wrong sub. It was the wrong sub. He brought Gomez on, took Rondon off. We lost the strike and he put up a Wobie in the false nine, which was just nonsense. I personally, if you're going to do that, I would have put Sims on. And I know he's only just come back, but he's a striker. And the thing, the thing what you can't get over is when you're a forward, you play naturally in the forward position. But when you're a midfielder and you get asked to go and play in that position, it ain't natural for you. So a Wobie like, kind of went through the middle. But... Wasn't he was dropping as well? So all of a sudden we had a lot of players behind the ball and no one pinning them back. Where Rondon at least was pinning them back a little bit. So I, if, if you're gonna bring Gomez on, I'm not saying Andre Gomez didn't deserve to get on the pitch because he was very good against Burnley. I'd have taken a Wobi off for Gomez and put Sims on for Rondon, mm. or even put Anthony Gordon through the middle. He's played as a forward. I think it's just that thing with. I think if you're Man City. And you're all technically brilliant. You can get away with not having a striker through the middle. But Everton aren't Man City. No, they're not. And, and therefore, you need someone who's going to look to get on the shoulder. No, and I go. think the game massively changed when when Ron then went off. But I think the problem is, is, is I, I don't know. I don't know what level Sims is at. No, I know, and, and, and he's I, only just come back as well. And, I, I and, 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 and I'll be and I'll be honest. Anthony Gordon is nowhere near the level of the Premier not, League. Certainly not for a while. <clears> the no, Premier League, no, nowhere all. near it. Nowhere near it. And you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, you're going to take someone off. You don't want to see your centre forward go off. But unfortunately, Rondon had gone off at half time. Simple as that. Once he once he went and sat down, his legs. Oh just, yeah, I'm not half a no, no, keeping no. him on. I'm just saying his legs are just. I'd have just gone forward. And to be fair, that's that's very much where the game changed because, and even though. In that spell of the game, I think we come out second half and I thought we we let them get on the ball. But after about five ten minutes, I thought we started to really started to we started nick, nicking the ball, didn't we? The core they started to nick it high up, and we had you know we were getting runs at them. And there was a couple of there was a couple couple of big moments in the game actually. There was the one where Gray got round the back of back, on, sure, yeah. and he's got hold of him. It's action back, yeah. he's got hold of him, and for it not to even be a foul. It's just mad. I mean, it's a red card. It, really. I'm not what I'm saying. It's but it's one. that's what I'm saying. If it, if it is a foul, it has to be a red card. Great course, and that. that's that's the thing. You make it. That's where refs are just bottlers. Yeah. Because the, you, they he'll say, oh, he wasn't really got his arms around them. It's one of those things where it's almost like you know he's put his arms around them, but they're not touching. But he went back. But he stopped them in his tracks, and mm. if he does give a foul there, he has to send them off. Mm. So he's made himself. He's given himself, or he hasn't given himself a decision to make. And he's just uh, so far should have jumped in. Well, unfortunately, because that's a game. Unfortunately, they're not. They're not. Games, they're, so. not they're not. They're not. They've they've eased it all back this season. We've mm. seen that, which is good in one respect. But the other side, for, for decisions like that, it was a poor decision. But it's Craig Pawson. Yeah, the first time we ever had him. He I think they're getting this thing off. mixed up where it's like this thing between um, the looking mm. at fouls. And they're looking at it going, well, how much how much was there in it and all this kind of thing. It's like, yeah, but I'm not it doesn't it shouldn't work like that. If you stop someone, if you grab all if you block someone from running and their ability is they're a pacey player and you've blocked them 
from going somewhere or pull the shirt or put their hands around them. Like, if he's got a shirt there, he, he, it's going to be a foul. But because he hasn't got hold of a shirt, you, you, it's all interpretation of the rules. And because he hasn't got hold of a shirt, you can you can get the ref gets away with it or VAR gets away with it. And the, it's just... The, it was a big decision. It was, it was a big decision. I'd seen it in the first half, though, with Mings after Gray. Grey skipped away, Mings went and done him. The ball played on, he eventually mm. brought it back, give a free kick, he didn't book Mings, mm. and it was a booking. And to be fair, they, I think he you know, he could have been sent off that lad on another uh, on a couple of multiple occasions where he hadn't got booked off. There was one where... What about the foot off? There was one where the foot was up, there was one on the uh, touchline where Grey spun him, and um, mm. and he, 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 he grabs him and pulls him down. Poor effort. There was multiple times, so there was that one, and then obviously there was the... The chance we fashioned, where obviously we moved the ball really well, got it to Gray, and he's bent one. He's, it's just gone wide, and that, and to be fair, that was like the pivotal moment because obviously that was that was must have been a minute, thirty seconds, yeah, one 0 yeah, down. yeah. It was, it was that, it was that thing we did. We started getting on top a little bit. We were, we were looking really threatening, and you're thinking if we can create a decent opportunity here and get in front, then I back us then to go on and win the game. Um, and Damari Gray, I must admit, when he hit it and I seen it flash past the keeper, I thought it was in. I expected, because he's in good form, I just expected the net to ripple. You look back and go, oh my God, that was close. And then you get the hammer blow that 30 seconds later, you one down. Mm. And it is what it is. Villa then took full advances. I think after once they went 1-0, they full, thoroughly deserved the three points after that because we, we were done. But it's the, the real frustration is that we, we couldn't take our chance when it come along. And I think the other thing as well is Everton have they had this little habit last season of like conceding quickly after the first one. Mm. I'm, I'm sure of it. United actually in a pre-season friendly. You know, and that's something that's this side. And, and Benitez, says, I guess, will get it out of it. But you've got to get rid of that thing of like clear your head. And you go one nil down, clear your head and keep playing the plan. We didn't. We lost our heads when it went one nil, probably because of the disappointment. But the first goal. You know, I've, I've spent the early part of the week defending Luca Dean. Um, but the goal is frustrating. And, I, and for me, it's preventable. Just going to have a quick look at just a couple of the stills because I feel like it's preventable. This is the. This is. Villa got the ball moving really quickly. And we're talking about Danny Ings. And Danny Ings is on the ball here. And uh, Luis is inside. Now, you could say to the core, he needs to be further back on the right side of Luis. But they've took this goal kick quickly and, mm -hmm. and got the ball moving. We just Michael Keane's looking at him. If we just move it on one, I'm looking at Keane. Keane's come towards the ball and left that big gap in behind him. But where you're looking at it, I just wonder if when Rafa Benitez and his staff look at this, they'll be saying to Michael Keane, you should have backed off there and blocked that hole instead of coming out to Luis because he's still, what, 40, 40 yeah. odd yards from the goal there. Mm -hmm. Do we have to go and pressure it? I don't know, but Luca Dean is already struggling here. If you move it on one more, Matty Cash's goal side of Luca Dean. Keane's out the game, got him. There. He's out the game. Villa have got circled players there. Leon Bailey's all on his own. Yeri Mina, I feel like he has to come across and he doesn't. Uh, Michael Keane's totally out of it. And obviously Matty Cash cuts across and smashes it into the top corner. And we're one nil down. And, you know, it had to be Matty Cash's first ever goal for Villa, by the way, because Everton. Everton do do that. Mm. Like if you haven't scored, it, it, you'll get it against us. Um, but from then on, Villa, Villa thoroughly deserved the victory. They done what we did to Burnley the other night. Mm. They, they made sure that the momentum carried them on, and why we really should have just cleared our heads and slowed the game down for five minutes and stayed in it. We didn't. We we went we went chasing the ball. Bailey had come on at this stage. We all know about Leon Bailey. Oh, we were, we were if to... only we'd have watched Leon Bailey. It's about buying him. It's about <laughs> having the money to buy him, isn't it? Um, well, we did watch him, and we should have known no, all about him. I know, I know. But mm. this doesn't always translate to what happens on on a on a pitch, does it? No, no it was a poor it was a poor goal to concede. Um, so for me, there, Luca Dean, just be stronger. Just know what what your position wants to do. He got himself the wrong side. No, that's what I'm saying. Just like be be stronger. If if the worst comes to worst, bring him down. Mm. Being, you know, be you under, once he skipped inside, you see in the space, you Don't. knew you knew there was nothing. You know whether he gets the shot off or not. 
um, or you know, gets the shot off and what happens from there. But do you afford any blame to beg of it? I've seen people blaming but I don't personally, but I've seen people saying he should have saved it. He hit it well, I thought. He's a bit of a cardboard cut out, I'll be honest. <laughs> I was I terrified. Well, the second goal. I mean, the save from Mings was incredible. No, I know, but the second goal, I think you have to put some blame down to Begovic. Because he can. The thing you were always taught when you're on a football pitch is the person who's. Behind yeah, yeah. The person who can see it is, is got it. He should have just come and took it to Dean out. But, I mean, it's the thing. We're not on the pitch. We don't know. We don't know whether there's been a shout. We don't know what. The ball, it's a great ball in. Mm. Superb ball in. Luca Dean. Is always under it, which is always a problem. Um, Begovic is, is in no man's land then because of that. People can say it's a great book, but there always has to be this thing, always things you can do. And mm. I, I was very wary of the game before the game of, of Begovic coming to take things from set pieces. He um, should, though, he's massive. That's what I'm saying, which he did into Huddersfield and it, put, mm. it made me worry a little bit. So the second goal, I feel like someone has to give. Someone has to give Luca Dean a shout there. There's a fella behind him, though. No, That's I know, but problem. someone has to give him a shout. As in, someone has to come and take that ball, and that should be the goalkeeper. I think the goalkeeper should be dealing with that. Mm. And, and it ends up with Luca Dean put... Because no, cause once Luca Dean takes a touch, it, it takes everybody out of the game. It's, it's, the in, game the, now, it's in the back of the net. So someone has to make sure that he, he doesn't take a touch, because he's always under it. I think the problem there, though, is... This is what I, I don't. This is one thing I don't understand. I don't understand why you put small players on the front post. I don't, I don't understand that. When Moyes was in charge, Lee Cars used to stand there, mm. and not, Lee Cars is not massive, no, but he also not small. And he used to deal with every flat cross. Mm. Always that, that was whipped in. No, wasn't it? That was the <coughs> ball out that I've said we should be doing, which is essentially you are shooting from the corner. Leon Bailey shot from there. He's whipped it in. He's trying to put it a foot under the crossbar. Any nick it's a goal. Andy Inchliffe used to do it. Funnily enough, the team was on the commentary, mm. wasn't he? But he used to do that, try and put it under the bar. I used to do the same when I'd take corners. I've seen lots of other people doing the same. Is that you're aiming for the goal. So if any nick, it's the, it's virtually impossible. We'd survived the same corner in the first half because Begovic's made a brilliant save. I, I don't know what Luke had... I'm not fully blaming Dean because he's jumped and it's just nicked off his head. But I, I can't blame the keeper either, though, other than... He either comes for the punt, so he's big. Mm. My only criticism of Begovic would be he's standing. So as he stands, he goes like that, and it's beyond him. Where I, I, does he, I don't know because Villa, there's a player behind Luca I, I think he should have done that, and that's the problem. But what I would say about Villa is, I think Everton's fifty fourth own goal in the Premier League, more than any other club. I think what Villa so. actually did really well was though they changed the set pieces up every single time. Yeah. So it makes it more com difficult for them. But you don't know what you're doing yeah. to to come up against. But I do. Do you mean he didn't just carry on taking short corners yeah, yeah. the whole night? Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, that's what happens when you have a set piece um, coach. Mm -hmm. When you actually, that's what happens when you actually think that, about every. I think we will. I think. No, 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 no. That's he not does blame. Think about I'm just saying that's it's not a blame of the manager. I'm just saying that's what happens when you mm -hmm. think about every. I just like every me, single department. I like me me team to mix things up. Villa did that really well. And the, but at 2-0 it was game over because we know without Richarlison and without Dominic Calvert-Lewin on the pitch goals were always going to be hard mm. to come by especially when you're two down um, well, and, look, and we didn't really we never really we'd had another chance haven't we at 0-0 as well the Alex Iwobi one where he was on the stretch it was a lovely little move he started it played it into grey and he slid it back and he <laughs> He hesitated and then he ended up stretching and it deflected and the keeper made a decent save. But after after the two goals, Villa took the game away brilliantly. Well, they just they just they took it away. That's as mm. simple as that. But the, but but then how easy is it when the third, with the third goal? The third goal's pathetic. Well, we'll have totally a look. Pathetic. We'll have a look at the third goal, which you know starts with um, a Villa throw, and I think it is over on the far side. And Danny Ings comes and gets it. And we can see here, Leon Bailey is on his own. Mm. Literally just stood on his own. Ben Godfrey's gone over. Now I've seen, I saw someone in one of our shows on the comments saying he was at the game and he saw Rafa Benitez pulling Ben Godfrey over. I don't know whether, I, well, I wasn't there and I've, I've looked back at all of the different angles. I don't see Benitez calling Godfrey over, but he may well have done because it mightn't have been picked up. But Ben Godfrey there, is in a shocking position. Yeah, he's circled. Awful. He is miles away, and I don't know why. 
if Benitez has pulled him over that and he's at listen, he's a Premier League manager and I'm just sat here, so I'm not questioning. <laughs> I'm just looking at it from a fan's perspective and going, I just don't understand why Ben Goffrey has to be that tight unless they're terrified that Yeri Mina's getting spun by Ollie Watkins, but then we're in trouble anyway. I, I think, personally, if, and I hear people saying, well, he's not a right back and all this kind of thing. I, 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 to me, that doesn't make any difference whether he's a right back or not. Mm. To me, that's just knowing the danger on the football pitch. But I think if that's Seamus Coleman, I think what's happening there is Seamus Coleman is screaming at someone from to midfield come in, to yeah. come in in there. Mm. And, you know, whoever's playing in front of Seamus Coleman, if it's Seamus Coleman, he's telling him to get in there. Mm. And I think that's actually Ben Godfrey's biggest mistake is that he's not, he's not, he's doing the, he's probably doing the right job there. Mm. And this was always the thing when you play football is he's you have you have your men marked up and you have one spare, but then you have to have another one. You always have to Someone's have another one. And I think Seamus Coleman there is screaming at someone from midfield Sounds to like get over there, mm. to get over to him. And it and I know what happens really quick, but that I think that's I think that's where that's the difference in maybe having someone like Ben Godfrey is when you're when you're at your position, naturally, you are you're already you already got the pitch in your head of what's going on, and, mm. and you've seen the scenario a thousand times. So you see there's a player, and you're screaming, and you're telling someone, "Get mm. over there now!" Or you get in here, and I'll get over there. Because actually, if you get in here, and we pa- we all pass one on. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's no way. He only really has to go. If we look at it, he only really has to move on. Then he has to be halfway. Ten yards or be, five yards. He only further. has to be. Go back. Ned, sorry to the one you've just had on there just before. But we, if you we look move at it on. if you look at if you look at the if you look at You're the um, the one on the halfway yeah. line, right? Yeah. If you look at that one, right? Mm. If he is five yards to further the right. over to yeah, the yeah. right, he can then just he'll do get o- he'll get over and do both of them because he's, he's got both. the pace. This, I mean, but I do think I just think that you just scream at someone to get over, yeah, yeah, someone, and I think that's where experience comes in, traffic. and when it's your position, because when he when he when the lad smashes it, he's only about five yards away, but. Don't get me wrong, he does brilliantly. Um, he does brilliantly. He gets a great first touch and he smashes it in. But for me, it's all about experience. That it's all about knowing to to be five either five yards deeper or scream at someone, get over here, get over here. Because in the end, it's just an embarrassing goal. Ings turns and plays it. And if you take it on to the next one, uh, he's played it there. Now Godfrey, they're running on. Obviously Bailey, that's come to Bailey. Godfrey, to me, if you watch that again. I just don't think he's sharp enough. I've seen him burn through and cut. He jokes. It's like he's not going flat out. Where we've seen Ben Goffrey go flat out and take people out. I, Bailey I, is he quick. Did, he didn't Bailey have a, is quick. He didn't have a very good game. No, no. I think Bailey did it. He skinned them. But Bailey point. then. Bailey, the next one is this one. He took the touch out of his feet and Goffrey gets across. And it's a, it's a mm. fantastic finish. But the goal reminded... Well, it was very similar to our third goal against Burnley the other night in, in the way that... Burnley were dragged across and Gray was allowed to go through the middle and the core he played them. This obviously was Ings with the switch. It was a good goal, but it was avoidable. And Everton will look back at, at these moments. And these are the things that you learn from. And this again, I was just I was thinking about, you know, what the, what's gone on over the last few years and where we are and all of that. And this is a this is literally you looked at the bench, you look at the state of the mm-hmm. squad. This is literally a culmination of really bad decisions from the club over the years. But it's also a culmination of having to sack managers. Is that no one's ever been here long enough to establish like basic like team rules if if you speak you know, basic framework of of doing things correctly. And it's all of that and, and it's the only we're looking at it now and we're looking at it here and I'm sure Rafa Benitez and his staff We'll be looking at it a hundred times, going like, what do we need to do better here? And them instructions will be to the team and the team can get it. We need a period of stability now. And people, some people who, who were tweeting Rafa out apparently on Saturday night and all that nonsense are going to have to accept that he's going to be here for a while. And if he's here for a while, it'll actually be beneficial mm-hmm. to the football club because they'll be able to get a structure into the team which is that they start understanding in scenarios how to deal with it. We had it with Moyes, who was here, and we go back to Moyes because he was here for long enough, is that once things were in place and players understood, 
it was very rare that Everton conceded the same kind of goal week mm. after week. You know, they'd done it to get rid of it. And Benitez has a look at this. And this, he might have learnt more from Saturday than he has from the first few games in terms of what we have to do, what players are capable of. But the other thing is, obviously, we were, like you touched on right in the opening bit, we were, we were decimated with, you know, we are injury FC. We have got four players out of that team immediately who would start mm. out your team. Not to mention, you know, Gabama. Mm. That would have been, in, in Coleman would have started and Gabama would have been on the bench. They're both out the team. Mm. Put that with Richarlison suffering from the Tarkovsky tackle, trying in again later in the week and not right. Having, now he's out. Dom, still not right. Jordan Pickford injured against Burnley. You know, we played a game Monday and we've lost two players for weeks because of referee allowing a, a team to rough you up and not doing anything with it. And we bore the brunt of it. So, And we aren't a squad that can cope with that, quite simply. Mm. So it was what it was. But, you know, for an hour, we were we were fully in there. We were fully into, the, mm. into that, well, that, that uh, game. As we said there, I think one of the major things was Rondon go, going off. Just it left us... It left us without that focal point. Let's just look at his numbers from the game, his first start. So, uh, 63 minutes, was it? Yeah. One uh, Shots off target, one shots blocked, one duels, one five out of 20. Um, pass accuracy was 39%, which is, yeah, rubbish, to be fair. To be fair, but I don't though, think that paints the picture. No, for strikers, though, the pass no. accuracy isn't high because they're, they're trying to do things. It's more likely to drop off. Yeah. But he had the two. He had the, he had the chance where you touched on before. Godfrey, it was a good little move actually. Yeah, yeah. Godfrey picked him out brilliantly, and I think he hits that when he's fully fit. He strikes it first time. He took a touch, which was actually clever because he fell. It went to ground. It was mm. contra went to ground. If he could have just got, the, he hesitated, and then he was on the stretch. Then he had the header off the corner, yeah, yeah. which if he'd have angled it a little bit like Mings, he might have caused him an issue. And, but there was little signs in the first half of strength. He was battling a little bit. But then you're right for the second half. He literally done that thing that we've done when we haven't played footy for ages, yeah. which is sit down and you go, you get back up and you think, your legs aren't working again. And it, it's not his fault. Benitez wouldn't no, have wanted course, them to start at the moment. He gave us a, um, ultimately, he did give us a shape to, to, you know, to play, to from, play from. And you're right, when, once you take a centre forward off and you haven't got one off, it just reminded me then of like, Man United, the Man United pre-season game and yeah. you can pass it round all you want but if you haven't got anyone up there to occupy defenders they step up 10 yards and the next minute they're, they're playing, they're playing, you know, they're playing up, your, up in your half more and I think that's where the game changed and what can you, what, what can you do there what can you do when you've got two centre forwards you know missing the lads only been training for a couple of weeks um, it's, it's, it's difficult you, know, you wouldn't expect to lose your two centre forwards Within you know, but within a week, so it, it just just our luck really, and the squad is very much on its ass. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Go and buy Danny Alves. Well, just go and get Danny Alves. That's what I do. I mean, um, <laughs> when you look at it, it's it's easy to be critical, isn't it? Um, you know the summer business and all that. But if there was no, there's no room in the budget. What can we do? We have just got to suck it up, haven't we? It is what it is. It's, we said that a few times, didn't we, in the transfer window, that the chickens are coming home to roost yeah. and all that. And, and quite simply, we've wasted a lot of money. We haven't bought correctly. Mm. And right now, we're going to have to suffer a little bit. But the, the, the fact that people shouldn't lose sight of is because I've seen... I, I ignored... I didn't go on Twitter on Saturday. I left it. I just left because I knew what would be there. But the reality of it is, Aston Villa have spent a lot of money in the last couple of seasons. They spent three hundred million, I think, mm. something like that. They had their best squad available. So they play for hundred million. And exactly, but they, but I'm just saying, they bought. They had a good. They've got a good bench and all that. They had a good bench at the weekend. If we'd have gone one nil up, I think we'd have won the game. So Everton aren't miles away no, from no, teams listen. like that. There's a the top four for me are in a different league. Yeah, They're in a different league. Leicester, who everyone loves, beating again at the weekend. Everybody from 5th to about 12th are all in this melting pot. Yeah, yeah. What Everton have got to do, they're in for a difficult few weeks because of the injuries, but if we have a little bit of the rub of the I green for, for the rest, certainly until January, and then bring a couple I, in. I think, I think, I think the okay. difference is, though, I think when you I think when you start the week off on a Monday, and it's difficult this week because we know we've got a game Tuesday, 
But I think if you start to get week off on a Monday and you know more or less what your team's going to be on the Saturday, it's a lot easier to deal with. You can start preparing for the game mm -hmm. a lot easier. It's a lot easier when you prepare for a game and then on the Friday you lose your striker and suddenly you've got to thrust someone in. captain. Yeah, and you've got to thrust someone in who's not, you know, who's not, not, not ready to play and, and the same with the right-back position. And, you know, it, it, it's going to be tough, you know, but... This is this is the way it is at the moment. We've got to look and say luckily if you want. I mean, normally I hate the the, the first international break after you just you know, the second mm -hmm. international break because you've had to suffer the first one and you get back into games and there's another one. But it'll actually come at a decent time for us this time because it gives the players and who are injured an extra two weeks to get back. We you know we we've, we've got a game at home at the weekend, which is a at any other time, we'd be rubbing our hands up. It's going to be a tricky game now because of the forwards, but Everton still should have enough to be mm. Norwich. They should. Then, obviously, United away the weekend later is a damn for me. And it sounds a bit negative, but it's a damage limitation, really. It's mm. make it as horrible and scrappy as you can. And it, but then you get into that international break, and after that, we should see Don back then mm. at the end of that. Richarlison, I'm not so sure about it. We don't know. Another scan this week. Let's hope it's not as bad as what we think. Um, Pickford will probably be back at, mm. after that international break and I imagine Seamus Coleman will probably be back after that so we've just got to suffer the next two games get what we can in the next we've got the cup game we've got Norwich at the weekend United is a free hit now because of the, simply because of the team we're going to put out and then we, we you know then we try to keep everybody healthy moving forward but it's been if we can beat Norwich at the weekend it's been a really good start mm. forget the United game because that was a tough game anyway. it's been a really good start Villa, if we'd have beat Villa at the weekend, I wouldn't be sat here going, top four. No. And we've lost, and I'm not sat here going, we've got no chance. We're still exactly where we were last Friday with it. Villa, they lost 3-0 the week before. They won 3-0 this weekend. They probably might get beat. They've got, they go on in three games now that are really tough. They'll probably lose another, <coughs> at least another one of those games. So I think teams are ding-dong, and Everton have just got to just hang on in there. And hopefully, Lady Luck with the injuries might, you know, start easing a little bit because don't forget we've lost someone we can't talk about. Mm. He's not available, you know, and goals and assists. We've lost another fella that hasn't wanted to be here and looks like he's on his way now to mm. Qatar and, you know, you're losing his goals and assists. And if he'd have gone three weeks ago, we'd have been able to bring Luis Diaz in or if he'd have gone and we couldn't get Diaz, we'd have got two in so the squad would have been healthy and we've ended up keeping him and he wants, because he wants to go anyway, he's going to go, it looks like. Mm. So we're gonna just have to. We're just gonna have to, you know, try to get everyone. The thing about it healthy. is, though, just just from the centre forwards point of view, mm. no, you know, Rondon. I think if he gets fit, will will be an asset, mm. and and he'll be someone. To he will get fit, won't he? And he'll be someone to play off. Mm. Um, Starting point. I don't know whether he'll score, you know, the goals that the other two will score, but he'll be, he will be some. He'll be a focal point, for 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 us to play and and, you know, tomorrow night. I don't know. That feels like it almost might. It'll be almost not sacrificed, but it does feel like the team we put out will just be. Yeah, we'll wait and There's see. There's an opportunity though tomorrow. If you're no, if I I'm, know, but if but, I'm Rafa Benitez, and we'll do this more on the no, preview, I know. But if I'm know. Rafael Benitez, I throw the gauntlet down to a few players. Tomorrow, no, I know, I know. And, and I'm talking about Ellis Sims. Yeah, yeah. And I'm talking about Lewis Dobbin, and I'm talking about Tom Davies mm. and Andre Gomez and people like that, and go. This is your chance, oh, yeah, and yeah. you're playing against the championship. Side. No, no, that's that. Don't get me wrong. I'm, a, I'm, a, I fully agree with so you. So it's a chance. It's a chance. It'll be tough. Don't players get me will have to play, but it will be a team. It'll be. It'll but I, I, th I was thinking I'd play Rondon, but I, I think I might just. No, that's no, what I'm saying because let them just recover. You need them. You need them for Saturday. Um, but though people will argue and say, well, tomorrow's more important because it's a cup. But that doesn't make it. That doesn't matter. Because you've got to it's, not a, it's not about fitness, being all you? important. It's about being. If you put them out there, it's you could do damage to them. protecting it, the fitness of the lad. Exactly. Got it. And we've got, because the other two are out for at least a three weeks yeah. more, you've got, to, you've got to make sure that it, you've got something. Yeah, it doesn't matter, doesn't, matter whether it's a, doesn't matter whether it was actually a Premier League game tomorrow night. If you've just played an hour, an hour on the Saturday and you haven't played for well, a long had, time. He had, what, 20 minutes on the Monday? 10. Against Burnley. 10 minutes. Come on, like 73, didn't he? <laughs> he was on first, wasn't he? 15 minutes then, say. 
and then he's had an hour at the weekend. So within that five days, so now you, ideally you want them, yeah. I guess you want to just rest them up until Saturday and just mm -hmm. go, no. But the, the right. team still should have enough to get through. It's tough, but we'll let's just have a look at the stats for the game. 15 shots to 11, uh, shots on target 3 to our 1, no, big chances, none, we had 1. Uh, possession 56 to 44, uh, completed passes 384 to 210. That just shows you how close the game was, and I think the XG was exactly the same. Well, I looked at the, the thing all the way through the game. There was nothing between the two teams. No. They got the goals. Well, that's and it. And that was and it. That's all, and that that's all that matters. So. That's all that matters sometimes. I mean, Dean Smith come out, didn't he, and said the scoreline flattered them. So it is what it is. Villa are a good side, got good players. Everton are a good side. You know, it's, it's, I've just done, a, I've just done a, a different show on, a, on another channel. And, I'd like a Newcastle fan on asking about the perception of Everton, like really good side, gonna be definitely in Europe. And you look at it, and it's like mad how other teams see you rather than we look at it from a, a very, I think Evertonians' view of our own club is really no, neg but, negative. But I, I think, think Saturday, though, know, is the is 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 the real the real more realistic view of of it is that yes, Everton have got a good starting eleven and a couple more mm. underneath that. It's just that once you scratch the surface, you you know that. Can I ask you this though? Go on. If Villa had the lost, no wings, no what? No, no, that's not. No Martin. No, that's, no, that's not the point. No Martinez. I know, but that's not the no point. No Matty. I, I don't care. Everton had one three. I don't care about other clubs. No, no, no. I'm just saying. That's the reality. I'm just saying. Yeah, but I don't, I the reality don't, is you I can't don't care say. about other clubs. The point being about us is is that that's the point is that you do lose those players and you, we are scratching about and that's 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 the problem. That doesn't. That's not. That doesn't. That's not a negative. That's a realism, and that's mm. that's all it is. Other people from other clubs can say you're going to be. Listen, if we played, if we had our strongest eleven out all season, I think we'd we we'd, we'd be we'd be well in the mix. Just that you're going Everton are going to have to find solutions, um, and and solutions can come from various places. Mm -hmm. They can come from the under twenty threes. They can come from biting a bullet and saying. When Seamus Coleman's not playing, John Joe Kenny's going to be our backup, right? Do you think be... that's what should happen? Rather than messing Godfrey about and stuff? I, I... Do you think we need... To... One thing, this was a... I think you've got, to... no, you've got to be very careful, Ben Godfrey is. You've got to be very careful with him because he's only played right back twice and he's been abysmal twice. Mm. But what you've got to be very careful is I think people want to see that mean and Godfrey partnership and Godfrey is a centre-back. Don't start messing... To be fair, up. Godfrey played right back against Wolves at home. Got, we got the goal from it. Don't... Yeah. Don't start messing them about. Yeah, becoming a utility and becoming one. one of those utility players. Don't no no because Michael Keane's not good enough for that. For uh, say what go, it'd be him. Do what you're gonna do. Him well, and Mina's, Godfrey. Mina was great again on Saturday. Mina and Godfrey and nail that pair down. Again. Yeah, you're yeah. the centre back. And if you, the, the, it's it's difficult sometimes. John go, John Joe Kenny's not near the level, but he is a right back mm. and he might. And to be fair, his positional has been questioned a lot of times. But sometimes you can get away with stuff just by knowing a position. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, Godfrey's a lot more suited to the Premier League. But he's got another chance. He's got a chance himself. Yeah. He's got uh, Kenny against QPR to go and put put in a strong performance up to him, isn't he? Yeah. He's got to play. It's to me. It's not a. It, it it wasn't a. Certainly after the game. It wasn't. It wasn't a cause for massive concern because oh, you look. You missed. look at the players we were missing and th and say it's gotten, isn't it? It's gotten because you look and just think, you know, it's all right. You know, we lose one of them players, you're a bit disappointed to lose four, and a game you look and go, we could have, we could have got something there. We could have, could have got something anyway. But we could have, you know, potentially we could have won the game if we'd have had our best team. It's fine margins, but isn't it? It, it was gotten for me after the game. I wasn't like. Rant and raving because it, it didn't make me feel like that. It just made me feel like, oh, for God's sake, here we go. But we're going to lose games, and that's the way it is. We're not. Mm. This team hasn't become incredible since last season, and we lost games last year, and we lose games next mm. year. It is what it is. It's how we bounce back. Sadly, it's going to be a, it, this week is going to be tough. <coughs> but I still feel like we've got Norwich at home with the crowd, yeah, yeah, and with the application of the players. I think we can beat them. 
And then obviously the United game will be tough because they're a great side, and, or they're a good side rather, and it's at Old Trafford and we won't have our best team. It's up to the players, to, to, mm. up to the manager to come up with a plan how to, how to try to kill that game as much as you can. Um, but Let's just get through the next forward. couple before we even worry about that. Um, but no, I, well, that's what I'm saying. I don't, think it's, I don't think people should go overboard about this defeat. I really don't. But unfortunately, people use it as an excuse to have a go at the people they want to have a go at, namely the manager. And to be fair, the manager, there's literally nothing the manager could have done as far as I'm concerned. It's also, that is also totally pointless. Mm. This manager ain't going nowhere and won't be going anywhere for a while. So you're just wasting your own energy. No, aren't you? It makes a few people feel better. I think. Well, fair I don't enough. know. Weird. I odd, just oddly for me, I just it's just if we could get two positive results this week, yeah, it'd have been a great start to the yeah, season. Yeah, of course it will. There you go. Let us know your thoughts in the comments on this one. Um, are you still hurting from it, or are you just like one of those days? Let as us. If, know. Sorry, as if Bailey come on it was brilliant and then went off injured. It's like done his stuff and just got off. Yeah, he'll be off for six months. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you join us over on Patreon if you want live exclusive videos where we will continue doing this video right now. See you later.